Hello dear friends, welcome back to my channel Mukesh English and this is Mukesh Soni. Friends, in this video we'll have the discussion of the question paper of Additional English, 3rd semester, BCom, BBA, BCA, BSc and all the other courses of the examination 2023-2023 question paper. We are going to have a discussion here under Bangalore City University, University BCU. I have already I have already done the discussion of the model question paper and the link of that model question paper solution you can see in the description box. So let's begin 2023 examination question paper third semester for all the courses duration for the examination two hours 30 minutes maximum marks 60 before that let's have a glance at the syllabus. So you have about six chapters and one play. So which are those six chapters here? The ugly politician excerpts from the diary of a young girl. Uh, Wilshire bus lets unite when it rains in Dharmasala. Then uh, Yashodra's lament. So these are the six lessons. And uh, the nine Jaco Hill. The nine Jaco Hill is a play by Guru Charan Das, which has the weightage for fifteen marks, one five. 15 marks weightage it has so it's very important so i have tried to give you the summary I, I have given i have tried to answer the questions in such a manner that somehow nearby it will also cover the summary so the answers will be quite lengthy but by default it will be giving you a summary so then afterwards you have the questions from the language component that is note making report writing uh, then life skills and social activities then the basic sentence structures. So this is a brief syllabus of your third semester, all the courses, additional English under BCU, Bangalore City University. So let's begin it. So the very first section, the questions from the lessons. And here, five questions will be given here. And each question you have here, one mark, five questions. So one marks questions are here. Why did Esther, why did Esther Kuroi wa? Kuroiwa or Kuroiwa take the yellow bus, yellow bus in the short story, Wilshire bus. So why does the why does Esther take yellow bus? What's the what is the reason behind it? Esther's husband was injured in the war and forced to take three months treatment. And for this, he was admitted in a hospital at Sotel. Esther was permitted to visit him twice a week, and for this she had to take the yellow bus. That's the reason she used to take the yellow bus. Then why does the line, will we separate soul from body in the poem, uh, let's unite, mean? What's the meaning of this line? According to the poet, we have drawn lines among us uh, and hearts, tongues, all are separated. Even they also don't know why are they separated. Even nations are also separated. So the poet alarms, if we would separate our souls from a body like this, so that's the meaning. Then mention any two things that Yashodara wishes for her husband. Yashodara wishes, may all the forest fruits turn sweet for her husband. May men surround him as do bees a flower. May the sun dim his scorching rays for him. May gods create shelters for him as he walks. So I'll be very slow in this question paper because I felt... Uh, the third semester syllabus is a bit difficult and a bit lengthy as well. So it's really very lengthy. Then uh, how old was the Kashmir landlady in the poem When It Rains in Dharamsala? How old is she? 80 years old, 80. Then what does Annie call her diary? She calls her diary as Kitty, K-I-T-T-Y. Why do people enjoy viewing minister's caricature in R.K. Lakshman, uh, Lakshman's chapter? Because they get a vicarious kick out of the hypocrisy and pomp ridiculed and ego punctured. That's the reason that they enjoy minister's caricature. So these are the one mark five questions. And now you have out of four or five questions it's four questions you need to select two so five marks two questions number one comment on esther's past that disturbs her greatly wilshire bus is a short story by hisai yamamoto from her collection 17 syllables and other stories it's about an affecting and 
upsetting experience a Japanese woman has while riding the bus when a drunk, belligerent, uh, belligerent man, when a drunkard gets on and starts taunting an elderly Chinese couple. For three months, Esther rode the bus along Wilshire Boulevard to the soldier's hospital where her husband was getting treatment for an old back injury. She took the bus on Wednesdays. Her, her, her friends were able to drive her on Sundays. She enjoyed the ride. Her seat companions were usually amiable and the glass-heavy architecture of the buildings were very, were, was very impressive. On one of these bus trips, Esther failed to act when she felt she should have. She cried over it at the time and it continued to bother her long after. Early in the route, a handsome, graying, extroverted man gets on the bus, makes a loud joke to the driver. At the next stop, a bunch of people get on, including an elderly Asian couple. The woman sits next to Esther, near the front, while her husband talks to the driver. Esther believes they are Chinese, and the man has to repeat his question to the driver a few times to be understood. The man then sits in the seat across from his wife. The extroverted man from earlier, sitting behind Esther, starts talking loudly about a local celebrity with large investments in the buildings they pass. He claims the man is miserly, although Esther has heard he is quite charitable. She can tell the man is drunk <clears throat> the, way, the way he was talking. Her seat companion turns around to look at the loudspeaker. Noticing her, the man challenges her, telling her to go back to the china if she doesn't like it. He continues mocking her with racial taunts. The man laughs and looks around for support. No one says anything. A man in glasses looks at her with sympathy, but she doesn't seem to notice. As the pretends to look out the window and feels detached. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry for the interruption. Esther pretends to look out the window and feels detached. She wonders if she's being included in the men's rent or if it's obvious she's Japanese. She's surprised to realize she's pleased that Chinese people are being targeted in this case. She re she's reminded of a time shortly after being released from the internment camp when she was on the streetcar and saw an Asian man waiting. She looked at him kindly but was thrown when she saw a button on his jacket that said, I'm Korean, I'm Korean. She had heard that the, she has, she had heard of the I'm Chinese buttons. So this is understandable. She thinks that that she thinks that an I am a I'm Chinese button would be useful right now. Realizing her failure, she looks at her seat mate and smiles, but the woman is a woman is expressionless and cold. At the next stop, the loud man delivers a final racial taunt before getting off. He's slightly unsteady as he walks off. The man with glasses gets up for the next stop and makes an awkward speech to the Chinese couple and possibly Esther as well about how everyone doesn't feel that, that, that the way and America welcomes everyone. He shakes the Chinese man's hand. The rest of the ride is uneventful. Esther gets off the soldier's hospital and so do the Chinese couple. Esther remembers something she once read about not paying attention to people when they have been drinking. She thinks perhaps that's the only time to pay them attention. She thinks of this until her detachment fades away and she felt reeling with a sickening sensation that there's nothing solid she can come to grips with. On seeing her husband, she runs to him and breaks into tears. He's flattered. She misses him so much and he looks smugly at his roommates she goes along with his interpretation so that's the answer for that question 
So I try to give the summary in that way. Second question brings out the poet's concern in the line, what will we part partition next in the poem, Let's Unite. The poem Let's Unite, written by Sayyid Shah Saud, sheds light on the current problems with the world is facing, which the world is facing. The poet uses vivid imagery to express his concern on whatever has happened to till date, that the differences have been increasing and posing a threat to the world peace. Having mentioned the vices of the differences that exist in this world, the poem ends with a strong sense of optimism where the poet wants to erase all the differences and calls to unite to make this world a better living place. The poet says that it's one beautiful world where we are all separated and isolated like the fingers of the hand or like the rays of the sun. The, the poet further comments that Though we live on the same soil, we are separated like black pebbles, yellow leaves. We don't share common culture and common religion or even a common literature. The poet recalls that it was an undivided world, but we drew lines on it. We have scared the beauty all around. We measure it and scaled it with yards and half yards. We have split and sliced it. We spl the split land was seized by different countries like Hindustan, Pakistan, Russia, and China. Some was colonized by America and Africa. Australia and Britain were shaped by people from South and North respectively. In a very short span, the whole world is divided into seven. It's divided by culture and water. The poet has no idea about who divided this world. First, hearts were separated then tongues were separated and then nations were segregated, segregated, segregated. People used to live together and later they partitioned their homes. The poet prays to God, the poet prays to God might have mercy on us if the if if we again partition, if the if we again partition again with separate soul from body, hand from body, and sense from senses. The poet finally suggests that before we again separate, let's become one, like bee and honey. We should embrace the world, accept one culture, one religion, one language, one literature. And the poet invokes the people saying, let's unite and the division in the world, like the Berlin Wall between you and me. So that's another way I have given you the summary. Third question, how does Yashodhara comes to terms with her griefs. This is a question from the poem Yashodra's Laments. Yashodra was a daughter of King Dandapani and Amita, sister of Buddha's father, King Sushodhana. Yashodra was weeded to her cousin. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry for this wrong pronunciation. Yashodra was wedded to her cousin, the, Shak the Shakya prince Siddhartha at the age of 16, 16, she gave birth to the only child, a boy named Rahul, at the age of 26. On the seventh night of his son's birth, the prince Siddhartha left the palace, his sleeping wife and the son, in search of enlightenment. She was devastated and overcome with grief and decided to reveal her anguish at, her, at his desertion. The poem expresses Yashodra's lament at the loss of her beloved husband, her inability to comprehend why her husband left without telling her when she had always supported him in his quest for Buddhahood and her desperate efforts to come to terms with the finality of his departure, to understand and to accept the larger cause that made her husband pursue the course he did. <clears throat> In spite of this, Yashodara prays to her husband, saying, May all the forest fruits turn sweet for you. May men surround you as do bees a flower. May the sun dim his scorching rays for you. May God's create shelter for you as you walk. Yashodara's lament is very expressive in the line, Oh, the palace is dark today. Oh, husband is mine. Fourth question. Five marks. Describe Annie's, Annie's feelings about having a diary. 
Annie was a very shy and introvert girl. She had friends, but none with whom she could share her secrets. She never confided in any of them. On her thirteenth birthday, she was presented a red and a white checkered diary by her parents. The diary played a very, very important role throughout her life. The first sight of the diary had made Annie grow a bling, a linking to it. and she started making entry of her deep thoughts and feelings into this diary she gave a name to that to this diary as kitty k i t t y and in a, in her in all her entries she had referred to it as dear kitty so there was no res- there was no aspect of her life which she had not mentioned in the diary she has mentioned everything whenever she found time she spent it with the diary she confided about the teenage desires her friends her fears her loneliness in fact everything in the diary she always felt a need of true friend to friend which she could confide everything she found that the true friend in her kitty she found the true she found that true friend in her kitty the particular diary so this is about these questions 15 marks marks questions one mark five five questions and five marks two questions now we have 10 marks one question out of three questions so totally we'll be having here uh 5 plus 10 15 and plus 10 25 comment on the usage of wit in the essay the ugly politician by r k lakshman The ugly politician by R. K. Lakshman depicts the manner in which politicians behave and how a comic artist perceives him or her. Lakshman was very skillfully. <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a lot of cold in spite of this. Sorry for the inconvenience. Lakshman has very skillfully crafted and delineated delineated the character of politician, which is imbued. with his trademark of wit this is published in the distorted mirror a collection of stories under sketched genre according to r k lakshman i'm sorry it's not a collection of stories it's a collection of sketches the distorted mirror according to according to r k uh, sorry r k lakshman somehow the word politician has come to mean anything but what he fancies himself to be someone wise dignified and dedicated on the other hand the image that actually forms in a mind is that of a somewhat pompous comical figure more like the character in a cartoon so these qualities get magnified if the politician happens to be a successful one and a minister so this is the wit of r k lakshman who has portrayed who has portrayed the politician in such a frame In this extract, the speaker describes how the image of a politician formed in our minds, and how the unsuccessful ministers keep themselves themselves very active. This essay depicts the state of politics in the country, where politicians often resemble caricatures of themselves. The author highlights how politicians once revered now seem more like comical figures. and even successful ones become fodder for cartoonist due to the antics and blunders the narrative the narrative follows the transformation of a friend from a simple man to a minister showing how power changes individuals often leading to corruption and hypocrisy despite despite the satirical tone the author expresses concern about the future of political satire if politicians themselves start monopolizing the business of making people laugh that depicts the state of pol- politics in the country where the politicians often resemble caricatures of themselves the author highlights how politicians once revered now seem more like comical figures and even successful ones become fodder due to uh, please avoid this paragraph it's a repeated version question number 2 here i have tried to give a summary bring out the helplessness of the poet in the poem when it rain in dharmsala so i have tried to give a summary and so this is, this is in another way it's a summary only summary or the or saramsh and other words the poem when it rains in dharmsala is composed by t sundu 
practice in view it is the epitome of the poet's desire for the independence of his motherland tibet his parents fled to india after the chinese occupation and when he visited tibet one day he was he was repatriated to india as the authorities declared him as a as an indian so he was sent to india he narrates the horrible experience of the three month long rainy ordeal that floods his room his bed is like an island when it rains surrounded by books and writings of all kinds in comparison to his motherland the place where he is staying will always be deplorable for him even with all luxuries in the world in the poem he speaks about his life in prison he was jailed 16 times by indian authorities for his anti china campaign recently he also held a 500 km march from dharmshala to new delhi or to delhi asking the indian government to revoke its one china united united nation sorry its one china united china outlook he is a champion of tibetan independence in the poem his line tibet or kashmir is very controversial as he attempts to compare tibet with kashmir he lives in a 300 year old british mansion in dharmshala which is now is a deplorable state along with four other tenants finally he, he ends the poem with an optimistic note and positive outlook he says that he cannot stay here forever he aspires for the freedom of his motherland tibet so that's the answer question number 3 elaborate the alienation and loneliness loneliness of migrant community portrayed in wilshire bus in this story set in los angeles some years after world war 2 a japanese american woman has a surprising reaction to anti chinese bigotry she hears comments by a man she classifies as a soma totonic soma totonic a powerfully built and aggressive person wilshire bus written shortly after world war 2 a young chinese american narrator observes an american on a bus harassing a chinese couple prompting her to internally gloat and then questions her on gloating questions her own gloating the narrator contemplates the anti japanese sentiment as well as the complicated inter- interactions between different ethnic groups the short story wilshire explore wilshire bus explores racial tension in post war american society we encounter a middle aged japanese woman esther kurowa Kuroiwa, who rides the bus every Wednesday to visit her husband in the nearby hospital. Her husband is a war veteran who served in the United States Army during World War II. At one stop, a drunk American gets on the bus, takes his seat next to a Chinese couple. He starts harassing the couple verbally, giving voice to his racial prejudices. So, the, in this manner, the Wilshire bus story provides an insight into the way. racial hierarchies are are constructed constructed yomamoto tentative tentatively suggests that there is a frightening tendency for ethnicity to be defined in superiority to other ethnic groups as they shocked to find relief in the fact that it is the chinese who are discriminated against and only wonders whether she can be distinguished from the couple as being japanese so instead of feeling sympathy or com- or compassion for the chinese couple esther tries to set herself apart and hopes not to be considered like them hence even though both ethnicities form a part of a minority when compared to the predominantly white population they do not support and help each other but rather search for the ways to establish clear cut boundaries between them The story ends on a note of self-realization and shame for Esther in not standing up to injustice and racial prejudice. So you can also refer to the previous question about the same lesson to add more answer. Then, okay, these are the questions we have discussed here. Twenty-five marks questions we have discussed here from the 
uh, four five lessons you have 15 marks questions from the drama you have play here uh, 19 uh, Jerko Hills here you have play here by Guru Charan Das so you have two varieties of questions five marks one question and ten marks one question so here while answering the 10 marks question i have tried to give you the summary in a very indirect way so that can help you so five marks question write and wrote note on rai sahib so each character in this play jacko hills is a very symbolic of different aspects rai sahib represents western outlook culture and speech he retains old bureaucratic loyalty to british colonial rulers he is a vulnerable Indian Sahib who is ready to flirt with middle-aged Chitra. The company Deepak works for wants to expand the business in Kolkata and certain Rai Sahib is the key to help him. Rai Sahib, a bureaucrat, works for the government of India and Amrita's close friend. Question number two. How does Deepak and Chitra, Chitra, I'm sorry, Deepak and Chitra symbolize a new middle-class values? The play Nine Jaku Hills or Jaku Jaku Hills by Guru Charan Das is all about the changing order in post-colonial Indian middle class, the old middle class giving away to the new middle class. It's a story about Ansuya and her family who belong to the old middle class and Deepak and Chitra who belong to the new middle class. The character of Deepak presents the plight of Indian sons who are just like a puppet in the mother's hand. Deepak loves Ansuya. He also accepts it in front of everyone while playing the game of truth or dare. But he cannot go against the wish of his mother Chitra who is a very materialistic woman. The play also explores the conflict between the old conventional middle class family represented by Amrita and Ansuya and the new emerging middle class family represented by Deepak and Chitra. Guru Charan Das has portrayed Chitra as a die-hard money monger fervently against her son Deepak's decision to marry Ansuya because Ansuya's family is bereft of all the luxuries and affluences and is almost on the verge of being bankrupt. So Chitra also dominates the whole family she is she is least bothered about her husband also <clears throat> question number three very important question discuss the setting of the play nine jacku nine jacku hill the play nine jacku hill by guru charandas is all about the changing order in the past in the post colonial indian middle class the old middle class giving away to the new middle class it's a story about Ansuya and a family who belong to the old middle class and Deepak and Chitra who belong to the new middle class. The most striking feature of contemporary India is the rise of a confident new middle class which is full of energy and drive and is making tiling happen. The play has multiple themes apart from changing order. It also talks about the downward trends of moral ethics of the new middle class and the wishful nature of the new middle class and the hold of Indian mothers on their sons and also fading class clinging foolishly to spent dreams about the incestuous obsession of aging uncles. But the main theme is a betrayal of sexual love. Traditional Indian social life is fundamentally, fundamentally incomprehensible to the West largely because we Indians have always regarded sexual passion as a relatively trivial matter so these result into higher value upon filial rather than marital love now we are going to answer here the 10 marks questions from the play nine jacko hill here three questions are here you need to opt any one so discuss socio-political issue of post-independent India as portrayed in the play Nine Jacko Hill. So I have tried to answer this question in the form of a summary. The play Nine Jacko Hill by Guru Charan Das is all about the changing order in post-colonial Indian middle class, the old middle class giving away to the new middle class. It's the story about Ansuya and her family who belongs to the old middle class and Deepak and Chitra belongs to new middle class.
the most striking feature of contemporary india is the rise of confident very confident new middle classes appearing up which is full of energy drive the play has many themes apart from the changing order it also talks about the downward trends of moral ethics of the new middle class and the and the emerging middle class also the existing middle class the main theme of betrayal the main theme is the betrayal of sexual love traditional indian social life is fundamentally incomprehensible to the west largely because we indians have always regarded sexual passion as a relatively very uh, trivial matter so these results into higher value upon filial rather than marital love the play begins two days before diwali in 1962 in an upper middle class house at nine jaku nine jaku hills in shimla when the country was at war with china the play is divided into four acts karan chand is the narrator of the play he introduces the two families around which the whole play is woven the whole play revolves around the two families of lahore and what happens to them after independence one of the family is a conventional middle class family which have the members amrita her brother karamchand who is also known as mamu and amrita's younger young daughter ansuya karamchand discloses saying amrita over there was born into a distinguished family into a world of grace refinement and good taste ansuya who is who is 26 years old is very impulsive but very intelligent girl who was not born to lead a staid or conventional life she has a new thoughts lonely withdrawn but with an almost fierce with vitality she wants to live fully and passionately that's about amrita amrita's husband died during the rites they lost all their wealth they had in lahore and came to delhi where they had a couple of mills and a big sprawling house in the civil lines due to the lack of business shrewdness in amrita karan and karanchand they they were all at sea they were forced to sell the mills and the house as they suffered heavy losses in the business finally they moved to shimla to the summer house nine jaku hill this was all they had been left with along with a trivial income from bonds and shares which was also insufficient for the kind of life the other family there is one more family where we find deepak who is 27 years old young man who is very successful executive settled in mumbai bombay he is full of energy and ambition very talented and smooth guy he is also under the excess, excessive influence of his mother chitra having had to come up the hard way he has cultivated the social graces he has already done well for himself and he has a very composed voice shining eyes and a bright smile so deepak is very self possessed and good natured his mother chitra enduring terror of partition terror of partition she moved to mumbai where with an obsessive devotion ensured that her son got the best education then a good job in good company chitra has a husband but he doesn't count means to say he has no value in the family he is just a survivor street smart calculating unconcerned about her ways the play highlights the changing socio economical and political situation of indian society in the 1960s and also presents the changing patterns of indian english drama <clears throat> ansuya was a realistic in nature and a mother amrita was almost uh, oh, sorry always lost in a past richness Karanchan is a conventional man who does not want to embrace the outside world and has a grunt of satisfaction in his home which retells him of his past life in this stagnant passage of his life he falls in the sinful aspiration of incestuous love with his, with with his niece with his niece Ansuya who later snubs him matlab mama mama bhanji Ansuya wanted to go away 
from this static decaying mental existence and incestuous in, incestuous or we can say incestuous social life of shimla and she wanted to settle down in bombay where she could work and live with deepak she felt stifled by her close life and the incestuous elite that makes up shimla society she yearns for the city life where people do things but a mother amrita who was lost in a nostalgia could never understand the condition of a daughter though they were turning poor day by day amrita was still clinging to her old times due to her aristocratic nature slowly and gradually all the antique in the house was sold out ansuya was <clears throat> sorry ansuya was aware of this but her mother was was not ready to accept the truth the truth ansuya longed for a companion in the first act we came to know that deepak is coming to shimla and ansuya finds hope in deepak she thinks deepak is coming to meet her but when she comes to know Deepak came to Shimla for business purpose she became angry later on she is convinced by Deepak the character of Deepak presents the plight of indian sons who are just like a puppet in the mother's hands Deepak loves Ansuya he also accepts it in front of everyone while playing the game of truth or dare but he cannot go against the wish of his mother Chitra who is very materialistic woman Deepak tries to convince his mother for Ansuya by saying it's my chance for an honest life she is a fine person with ideals <clears throat> but Chitra does not accept Ansuya she wants her son to go after money and power which is with Rai Saheb and so she does not find it shameful to spend time with rai saheb the ias secretary of the government of india for her son's company license finally materialistic world wins over emotional love deepak is married to rai to rai saheb's niece niece so i'm sorry rai saheb's niece and also gets a license for his company on the other hand anus ansuya is left alone but she does not get demotivated she follows deepak's plan for nine jaco hill to convert it into hotel so that they can make best use of it in their critical financial condition by enabling An- anusuya or ansuya to be confident and self reliant so finally we can say that nine jaco hill highlights a number of socio economic and socio political issues of post independent india it also focuses on changing value systems of society it depicts the new middle class who wants to become rich by at any cost and the old middle class who are still clinging to the ethical values the play gives us an insight into the past independent indian aristocratic society where emotion does not have any values money plays a very important role in the life of people guru charan das plays have contemporary themes it influences every walk of life his play does not follow the conventional model but it allows the audience to think more rationally and critically so friends you can consider this answer as a summary also somewhere i have tried to touch the important aspects of the of the play here second question comment on the relationship among mamu ansuya and amrita The play begins two days before Diwali in 1962 in upper class. Uh, so you can uh, you can pause the video and you can answer. You can easily go through it because I have copied the same this answer from the previous answer only. Somewhere to bring some connectivity or the extraction. So you can pause the video and you can read the answer. yes you can read the answer and you can pause the video right okay so this is how you'll be given here 15 marks questions from this play here from this drama here and if you read my previous questions answer the question but two of this question paper i hope you'll get the summary of the whole play so so far we have discussed here 40 marks questions now we have 20 marks questions language components so here one passage will be given here the five marks questions the passage will be given and you need to transform this passage convert this passage into a linear format or a flow chart 
so linear format means to say like point number one then then the sub point one point one again sub point one point one point one point one so i find the flow chart is more convenient you can read this passage the flow chart is more convenient to give the answer instead of the linear chart so you can also try my answers are very limited Again, I say that please do refer to your textbook, the prescribed textbook by the BCU. Please do refer. My answers are just, an, just a sample answer or a specimen answer. Then the second question you have here, report writing. So you have here two types of report. One is the status report. One is the completion report. So go through this answer very seriously. Even I have done a video on the model question paper also. So if you go through model question paper video also, so that also can help you to practice in a more better manner. So we have a question here. You are the principal of your college. Write a status report to the management regarding the construction of college auditorium using the following hints. So you have lack of fun, labor shortage, incessant rain. So first to uh, first is, is here to Dr. Srinath, who is the secretary of XYZ institution, from whom, from the principal, Mr. Naresh, subject, progressive report on auditorium construction, Instru introduction. This report is a monthly update of the auditorium construction project. project. Currently, this project is in the first phase, and the following uh, issues have been noticed, labor shortage, continuous rainfall, delay in the funds released by the management. The team formulated an action plan to resolve these issues. Then uh, purpose, the report records the progress made on the auditorium construction project, campus one from so-and-so duration. You can change the duration. It covers the details of the work completed till date and the work yet to be done and the problems faced. Work completed, the planning and the sanctioning of the length of the project is completed. The foundation work is completed then work in progress. The engineer's team has been working to complete this project as per the schedule. The structural work is completed. Work to be completed. An organized rough draft is prepared to complete the remaining work in time. For example, intermediate walls or the construction of the upper part of the platform. Then uh, the problems encountered. The following issues were encountered from January 2024 to March 2024. Delay in the fund release, labor shortage, continuous rainfall. Now, who is the sender? Mr. Naresh. So I have done a mistake here. Please do uh, correct this mistake. Position should be here, the principal, not the project chief executive manager. So please write here, principal, XYZ institution, date 10th April. So which are the key points you should remember? It's five marks question. First is here, to, to whom you're writing, from, from whom it's written, what's the subject, introduction about this project. Then purpose of, or the scope, what is the purpose here? Is your work completed? How much work you have done? Work in progress, which work is going on? Work to be completed, which works are still yet to be done? You can write in the points also. Problem, problems encountered, which is already given in the question paper. Name, who is who has written Mr. Naresh? What's the position? The principal, XYZ institution. Date of this report. So these points are very important for the status report. Look at here in the question paper. In the question, it's written here, write a status report. For the status report, this is a format, right? Now you have a choice here. If you cannot answer this question, we have we have a question here. The full report, <clears throat> the complete report. The government of Karnataka has provided free drinking water in all the government institutions, conduct a survey on the implementation of the scheme and submit a report to the health minister and write a report using the following hints to the health minister methodology hurdles and the water quality so you can use those hints number one so this format is different you can see that the key points are very different to the health minister government of Karnataka. title report on drinking water scheme introduction it's already in the question paper the government of Karnataka has provided free drinking water in all the government institutions. As per the instruction, as per the instructions, a survey has been conducted to analyze the implementation of the scheme in all the government institutions. Objectives to know the member of institutions, to know the number of the institutions benefited by this scheme, 
to analyze the progress of the scheme to evaluate the future growth of the scheme next point scope or methodology the survey has been done as per the guidelines and the methodology guided by the Karnataka urban water supply department procedure to collect the data the following methodologies have been employed feedback forms or the interviews findings the findings were as follows there was a positive feedback from the stakeholders it has increased the admissions in the government institutions then conclusion the survey was successful and encouraging it reflected the success of free drinking water scheme in government institutions across karnataka it has also paved a path to bring some more strategies to strengthen the scheme recommendations more water purifiers to be installed to meet the demands name the writer aditi sharma position the executive manager free drinking water scheme date 30th march 2023 so you have seen here this is called here completion report the format is here two title introduction objectives scope or methodology procedure findings conclusion recommendations name position date if you remember even those key points also you'll you'll be getting two marks and the description of each key points you'll be getting here five marks for more practice of this report writing question please go through my video on the model question paper you will get one more example so now let's move to the second last question five marks question which is based on life skills and social activities so here you have two questions are here you need to opt two questions one is here describe the qualities that make you unique so here you need to write the qualities versatility depth of knowledge language understanding continuous learning empathy and adaptability so you can describe it you'll be getting here five marks or if you don't like this question you can opt any other que other other question have you ever helped any person or animal in the recent past describe so your past experience so one memorable day i encountered a stray dog trembling in cold rain seeking shelter under a under a very awning uh, time Moved by compassion, I approached the timid creature slowly, offering a gentle hand and soothing words. With patience and care, I gained the frightened dog's trust, allowing me to lead it to its safety. I provided food, water, and warmth, gradually earning its confidence as we spent the day together. By evening, the once shivering dog wagged its tail, displaying a newfound sense of security and gratitude. Though it was a small gesture and the bond formed that day reminded me of the profound impact kindness can have on both human and animal lives. So this is how on the topic life skills and social activities, you'll be given here two topics. You need to construct a paragraph, draft a paragraph. That's for five marks. Now you have five marks. Last question is here. Five marks question is here. You have here five questions with a very jumbled segments. <clears throat> and you need to write in the meaningful order. That's it. You can pause the video. You can go through this answer. It's very easy. So the jumbled segments will be given. And you need to write the uh, these segments in a very proper order to make it a meaningful sentence. So now let's give a, a recollection, a glance. So the section A you have here. Three types of questions. <coughs> I'm sorry. You have here one marks five questions and five marks two questions, then 10 marks one question. Then you have the question from nine Jacko Hills, the play, uh, five marks one question, 10 marks one question. Next, from the language component, five marks question from the note taking, where you can use the linear note taking or the flow chart. Report writing, which choice you have here, you will be having choice either the status report or the completion report, life skills or social activities. Again, you have a choice here on the two topics, you need to write a paragraph. Basic sentence structures, here the five jumbled segments will be given. You need to order them and you need to write in a very proper order. So this is how, friends, I have tried to solve the question paper of 2023, third semester additional English for all the courses, BCom, BBA, BSc, BCA, BHM, and all the other courses under BCU, Bangalore City University. I have also done a model question paper solution. The link of the model question paper video, you can see in the description box. This is how you'll be having the two question papers 
I hope these two question paper solutions will definitely help you to get the best marks. It's very tough question paper. I again I say to you, have some uh, patience while answering the questions, right? So I wish you good luck for the examination. If you like my video, click on the like button and subscribe my channel. If you're not yet subscribed, and also very important, go through my channel's playlist. I have done a lot of videos on your generic English also. Don't forget, I've done the videos generic English also. So that also, that's also going to help you in the forthcoming examination. Thank you so much. Wish you good luck.